Hey YouTubers, it's Rad Fox here, and I want to take a minute to uh, talk to you about a problem that I had on my Golf R. My all-wheel drive had been acting up for quite a while, and uh, it kept working. It seemed like the, the rear wheels were being driven less and less, and I started getting more and more front wheel spin. And um, I tried swapping out uh, pumps, control modules. I reprogrammed the control module with uh, United Motorsports. Um, they didn't fix the problem. I swapped the uh, actual uh, Haldex unit out for another one, but it was a used one because I didn't want to pay 1800 bucks for a new one. Um, that didn't fix the problem. And one of the symptoms that was happening is that every once in a while, like if I really, if I launched hard off from a stop from a dig, um, I would get this rapid banging sound. Bang, 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 bang. And it sounded like it was coming from the rear of the car. And so I kept thinking, oh, the clutches must be rapidly engaging and disengaging. There's something wrong with the pressure. Um, until uh, one day after I had uh, just switched my car over to Flex, United Motorsports Flex tune, and uh, I'm still running the bass tune on it right now, or the setup tune. I, I, need, I need to go in on Tuesday to get the, all the power unlocked out of it. But basically, I went and did a launch, and boy, did it fucking light the fucking tires up smoke and spin in front tires and I was barely moving you know within the first couple seconds and that rear end started banging like crazy and then boom the uh, damper on the drive shaft separated and popped off and started grinding into the uh, the rear axle housing and so I ended up I took the drive shaft out took it all out and I was driving the car's front wheel drive and uh, looked at the drive shaft. I didn't see anything wrong with it. And you know, the the only thing that made any kind of sense, right, is that there's such a a um, um, a violent, rapid banging torquing that that fucking disc spun off. And so um, I kept you know researching, looking on the forums, and I was like, well, I don't see how it can really be the rear end. All right. So as I was researching. Um, this banging i kept thinking it's got to be up maybe it's possibly up in the front in the bevel box or what they call sometimes the um, angle gear or the front transfer case or the front carrier um and you know i saw i found a bunch of stuff on the forums but it was all really light stuff most of the time it was like oh i took the car in and uh, you know they said it was the bevel box, but that was pretty rare. It seemed like most of the time the dealers would always throw thousands of dollars at the car by replacing the whole rear end. First they start off with the pump, then they do the control module, then they do the Haldex, then they swap the whole fucking rear end and the shit would still be broke on some of these cars. And I saw there was a couple cars that they bought back um, because they couldn't diagnose it. And it, no, nowhere did I see that they had checked the damn bevel box. And so on my car, I kept thinking that it couldn't be the bevel box at first because uh, when I jacked the car up in the air, put it in gear, all four wheels would spin and I could like hold a rear wheel and then the other wheel would, would you know, stay spinning. And so I was just like, this doesn't make sense. I get underneath the car with it in park and I try to turn the dry shaft by hand and it wouldn't turn until finally, just recently, uh, after reading through all these websites on diagnosing pump failures and all this kind of crap um, and where I really seen it was in the Volvo forums there was lots of people that had similar kinds of problems on the Volvos um, and they said you know same kind of thing uh, put the car in park uh, make sure the front wheels can't turn and try to turn that drive shaft so I said you know what I know that the wheels are fucking spinning so I took a big damn pair of channel locks and was able to put it on the uh, drive shaft up where the flange is at so I didn't damage the, the shaft and I was able to turn the shaft with it in park with the wheels dead still not moving and so at that point I knew there was something wrong with that damn bevel box and I mean it was a really tight turn I mean I, I, it felt like it was metal sleeved metal turning on sleeved metal and so I ordered another bevel box and got that in put it in the car and uh everything's fucking fine now. So all the bullshit that I had went through with the control module, the pump, the Haldex and all that was just a fucking waste of time and money. So um, 
in this video here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to tear apart my um, bevel box. And you can just watch me do that if you so care to do that. But here's what it all comes down to. This is the uh, actual uh, main ring gear that's inside the bevel box. And I believe what they call this is the hollow shaft. And it passes through. Your uh, passenger half shaft plugs into here. Your... Um, uh, and it actually slides all the way through and it plugs in on this end into the differential in the trans in the uh, transmission and if you're a front wheel drive car really your, your uh, differential only has to connect through your spider gears into this shaft that goes that that would be going through here and just turn this wheel but on the all wheel drive models the outside of the differential on the housing has teeth on it has splines on it and they plug into this okay and at first I was thinking maybe this had stripped because reading through the Volvo forums on the Volvos this actually is detachable this end is a coupler and it's detachable and it's purposely made with softer metal on these teeth than what's in the differential so that this will fail first before the transmission breaks and so there's lots of these Volvos out there where this is failing you can buy this kit for the Volvo and replace it but I saw looking through all the videos looking through diagrams that this appeared to be a straight shaft and so I was hoping that this wasn't fucked up in here because that could mean that my differentials screwed up and I'm not ready to buy a wave trek or whatever right now I'm gonna do that eventually later but I didn't want to have to tear into the transmission so anyways I pulled this thing out and you'll see in the videos and what it ends up being, the problem with it is, is that this ring gear right here is fucking pressed onto the shaft. So this is a, you know, a load bearing ring gear that's pressed on. It's not bolted, doesn't appear to have any kind of keying, anything. It's fucking pressed. And so on mine, what happened was, is that this ring gear was, it had to have seen enough force, right? with the launch or something where I lost traction and then it rapidly gained the tra traction back and the tire stuck, where it's fucking spun this gear on this shaft. It let it just spun it a little bit. And what happened is over time it got worse and worse. So after I cut it all open and took it apart and I separated it, you can see right here that what was going on here. And so this gear, like I said, is spinning, would spin on here, but not you know, not with the car off the ground, and, you know, I don't know how much force it was taken to um, break it free, but I mean, I had to put that damn giant pair of channel locks on there to make it turn. Um, but obviously, you know, giving it any kind of gas, doing any kind of launch, and this fucking gear will start spinning on here. And the thing was, what's crazy is it is still perfectly in place, the, the mesh or the uh, backlash, all that. It looks perfect on these gears. There's no damage on the gears, except underneath. And it's a very interesting press fit, because it's stepped. And so what I'm thinking now, based on all this research I had done with um, Volvos and all that, is I think with the Volkswagen, this is designed to be the failure point to protect the uh, transmission and engine or whatever. So this is designed to give it some crazy amount of foot pounds where this will pop or spin and I guess it's possible that this could you know maybe pop save your save your system and it might still it probably still hold but if it keeps popping and popping it's just gonna probably get worse and worse where like mine was at but again no noise coming from this I put a stethoscope on there listening to it um, with the wheels spinning off the ground I didn't hear nothing I drained the oil, the oil was dirty, and uh, you'll see that here in a minute, but I collected, I saved the oil, <clears throat> the, uh, the case has two magnets on it on the plugs, and there was just a teeny little bit of metal, nothing abnormal, um, even in the oil there's little teeny teeny pieces of metal, um, but I was looking for something big, I'm thinking, well shit, something, if it broke, I expected teeth to have snapped off or something, right? But that wasn't the case. So the lesson here, I guess, is, or the moral of this all is, is that if you do start, if your car does start acting all front wheel drive, 
and before you throw a shit ton of money at you know a pump or Haldex clutches or a new controller or whatever um, I would jack the car up put it in park and put some big damn channel locks on the damn drive shaft um, at the flanged area where the bolts are at if I can try to turn it and if, if that drive shaft turns and your front wheels aren't turning and it's in park then that bevel gear is fucked up and so you need to replace that whole unit so that's all I have and uh, the rest of the video is just going to be me tearing it apart and looking at it so hopefully that's entertaining for you guys but uh, uh, I just want to make people aware of what I had seen so oh wait one more thing so there was one clue on the forums where a uh, one of the forum members was in Turkey and that's how I got the idea for all this but he mentioned that the mechanics over there first off he said the dealers didn't know shit same kind of thing they want to throw money at it but he mentioned that the mechanic that he took it to a private mechanic had said oh yeah those things go bad all the time and he, they, he said that it was a defective design. But again, after what I've just explained to you how it's done on other cars, I suspect it's it's a feature, it's a design feature um, meant to be there. But what he said was that um, they had attempted to weld the problem. And so what I'm thinking is, is that they tried to weld this gear onto the shaft right here. And maybe they didn't do it right, but uh, supposedly they said they always fail. So might be something to look into when you get up to crazy, crazy numbers of horsepower. Um, not sure. Might be something where you might want to take these out and freaking have a professional or somebody that really knows what the fuck they're doing weld these two metals together and then probably to keep it from spinning. But then you're going to break somewhere else. But hey, that's the name of the game, right? So that's it. So enjoy the rest of the video and hopefully... I helped you out somehow. Later. All right, Adam. Adam's making freaking jack stand pads. This hard ass freaking Porsche rubber shit. Just so I can uh, get this jack stands up a little bit higher, so we can get underneath this motherfucker. And here's the motherfucking thing we're working on right here. So I'm pretty sure mine is bad. This one here came out of a 2015 Audi S3 Quattro. And this shaft through here is, is straight through, right? This plugs into the uh, spider gears on the differential and the transmission. This pops in, but this outer spline right here, this outer fucking, what they call it, I believe the hollow shaft, has uh, teeth on it on the inside. And you can see them there, hopefully. And so the uh, differential housing actually plugs into this on the all-wheel drive models and spins this shaft. This shaft is supposed to be a one-to-one -to, -one to here. Well, I don't know about one-to-one, -one, but there's no um, clutches or anything like that. Straight gear drive from here to here. So when this turns, or this has to turn. And so on mine, what we found was that with the car in park, so that this shaft, this shaft was not allowed to move, I could take a big pair of pliers and I could turn this and it felt like it was tight metal sliding on metal. And so that tells me there's something stripped out. Hopefully it's not these teeth here, uh, or maybe if it is, it's hopefully it's on this hollow shaft and not on the actual differential. Otherwise I will be replacing the differential. But uh, I seen on the forums where somebody mentioned, one of the uh, uh, folks that live in uh, Turkey mentioned, that their mechanic had uh, seen a lot of these fail and that uh, there's one of the gears in here is somehow not affixed to one of the shafts correctly and it can break off and there's no way to fix it supposedly so we'll see when we get into it but um, this is what we're up against Okay, so with my car, again, so you can turn this. It feels very rough and it's jerky, but there's no grinding sounds at all. And I'm turning this. You can see it's actually turning the shaft. Obviously, we can hold this and it won't move. Um, 
more important thing to look at would be this side, right? That this part of the shaft here, right? Again, that the differential housing plugs into and locks up against. When this is turning, this outer uh, shaft, this hollow shaft should be turning. And I think, I can't, I don't think I can show it, but again, when I had this locked, I could still turn this with a big pair of channel locks. And so that told me that something's wrong in here. So we're gonna take this part and we're gonna see what the hell is going on in here. Because I have my suspicions. Obviously, there's um, nothing wrong with this. This just passes through. Uh, I could spin the passenger wheel, so obviously that's not the problem. But look at this. Okay, so again, here's your shaft. Your hollow shaft goes through, and this gear is sitting here, right? This gear is pressed on here. Look back up in here. I don't know if you can see up in that crack. Do you see that there's worn metal, flared metal down in here on the back side of this? I suspect this is it right here. This gear is spinning on here. So it's, it's pressed on here, so it has enough force to actually put it to this uh, pinion gear to actually turn the shaft. But I suspect this, I suspect this is what's slipping on this shaft and we're gonna we're gonna see if we can pop that off so let's take a look inside of here first there's a little bit of metal down in here um, not so much hopefully you can see it in here but there's a little bit down in here this pinion gear if this is what this is called in this case it looks beautiful there's no freaking no crazy wear on that nice sharp edges it's beautiful right okay let's see how well this spins right now um eh let me see here can you see this let's see if you can see in here okay it's spinning much easier now but it's still a little a little bit bindy i wonder i wonder how much play it has but again i this is possible there could this could be the problem in here but i'm telling you right now Looking at this right away, I can see that there's something wrong right there. So, I'm gonna probably have to go put this on the press. Oh, there's a nut, what does that nut do? So check this out, there's a nut in here. So that nut must be holding this against a bearing in here, but that's not where the problem's gonna be. So I suspect what I'm gonna do, I don't know if I got a damn nut that, a, a, sock, a socket that big, holy shit. You see the size of that thing? I don't see how I can get this off, right? I can see this fucking chunks of metal and shit in there. Just, it's, it's just spinning. And look, what is this? Hmm, that's weird, look at how this is too. I wonder, do you see how there's like slag in here? I wonder if that's from when it was manufactured, or is that because the hot metal that was spinning in here was being shot out and it implanted into these top edges right here. That's amazing. Amazing, amazing, amazing. Fuck, I need to get this nut out. Hell yeah. Somebody not putting it correctly, this one. You think so? Yeah, you see it right here? It's factory though. Mm -hmm. Wow. It looks like it's crooked. Yeah. Hmm. It appears that this space here is less than this one.
Now, I just washed this with water, so let's see what we got here. Again, this is so fucking amazing that there's nothing wrong with these fucking gears. How the fuck does that stupid fucking ring gear spin? Unless this one does it too. What holds this on here? This has got some interesting machining in here because this is what sits in the bearing. It's cut a little bit deeper down in here, which makes it almost look like there's a lip, like it's pressed, but I doubt it. I'm gonna clean this out. Yeah, no shit. So with that many people out doing it, to where I can't even do it, and they're probably not making shit. Right. That first week I started doing it, what was that, four days? Yeah. You hear that fucking boom? It fucking popped. Popped, at least popped out. Oh, fuck, I don't know what's going on though. Is it hitting on the bearings? No. Oh, That's through. Look at that shit. Look at that shit. Fucking gear spinning on here with enough fucking friction to fucking drive the wheels except under load. Unreal. Look at that shit. Fuck, man. Now, how the fuck is this even supposed to be on here? You're seriously telling me that this fucking gear is pressed on. Now, wait. Now, look at this fucking gear. Look at that. I mean, the whole thing, it's pressed. It obviously was tight here on this surface and this surface. So it's like it's pressed. It's like a double surface press. But I mean, look at this shit thing was fucking spinning every time I get on the goddamn gas just like the front tires up this is fucking unreal so it's funny though it looks like there's a lip here and it's like that's what I had to pop it over I wonder if that's made into it you see this it looks too perfect it looks like it this there's a deck here and then it steps down it looks like right here Look. Well, see, that's weird too because it seems like it looks like it's more wallowed out to the outside. I just can't even fucking believe this shit. Look at this. I'm trying to figure out how the fuck this is supposed to work. It's just pressed. Maybe that's what's supposed to give so you don't break your transmission. Is that what it is? So if your rear wheels and everything binds super tight, this is designed to fucking spin. There has to be, right? This is fucking nuts. I wonder how much force this takes. I'm gonna fucking write Volkswagen or something. This is crazy. I just can't believe that a fucking pinion gear is fucking pressed on on a drivetrain. And I suspect that probably once this pops once, you're fucked. Once it pops, it just fucking keeps popping more and more and more and more and more and more and more. 
this is the oil that came out of that case when I first checked it and you know there's little there's little pieces of metal in here you know you can see them sliding down in there so the hard on okay so yeah you can see there's little pieces of metal but it's like you know you drain it and you think huh there's no chunks so nothing must be broke I still I just can't believe that this gear is pressed it's insane I wonder how much force this takes and this fucking looks like it's a backwards thread, reverse thread, right? Yeah, I'm going. Yeah, it's getting tighter going backwards. Fuck, no wonder we didn't get it off.